Good morning, class. Today, you are going to learn about substitution. Substitution is going to be your favorite method of finding a place where two lines intersect. What? Is this the first time you've ever seen a creature teaching you math? Oh, that's a shame. Well, get used to it. Here we go. You should take out a pencil, your notes, and maybe even a calculator. It's time to learn about substitution. For those of you who did not enjoy graphing, substitution might be one of your best friends. Here we go. Substitution. Believe it or not, you have understood substitution ever since you were in kindergarten. For example, let's take a, a high school example now. What if your math teacher right here were to get sick or have jury duty? or something like that. Then he is not at school. And then the next thing you know, you've got this really good looking guy coming here and teaching you math. Yeah, that guy. So this guy is your substitute. Instead of your usual teacher, we have substituted this good looking guy right here. So this is substitution. In the same way, we're going to substitute certain numbers in place of certain letters. It will be substitution. It's just that easy. Now this looks a little bit scary. There are lots and lots of steps right here. Six long steps. But don't worry, you're going to get so much practice doing this that this will be deep, deep in your memory. So let's take this first example right here. We have x equals 2y minus 9 and 4x minus 2y is negative 18. So looking back to our steps, step one is solve for a variable and circle. Now, oh, there's the good looking guy again. So solve for a variable and circle. We want to solve one of these so that it says x equals or y equals. Do either one of these say x equals or y equals? Well, this one does not. However, this one, yes, it does. It says x equals 2, 1, minus 9. So I'm going to circle what x equals here. In this case, it's 2, y minus 9. Next, step two. We're going to insert number one, that's the thing that we circled, into the variable in the other equation. So, this seems like a really lame step, but believe me, it will save your life. Well, maybe not your life, but it will at least make it so you don't make dumb mistakes. We're going to draw an arrow into whatever we didn't circle from that equation. So this is x equals 2y minus 9. So we're substituting 2y minus 9 instead of that x. So here we go. I'm going to just rewrite this entire equation exactly the way it looks, except when I see that x, I'm going to put a blank. All right, copied exactly the way it was, but instead of x, put a blank. Inside that blank, I'm going to put 2y minus 9 in parentheses from this 2y minus 9 right there. We have substituted 2y minus 9 instead of x. That is like the substitute teacher. Now we're just going to solve the way you know how. I'll take this one a little bit slowly and then gain speed as we go. So 4 times 2y is 8y. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. And then I copy everything else just the way it looks. Your next step is to combine some like terms. It appears that we have two different y's on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to do 8y mi minus 2y, which is 6y. Copy everything else. Math is a lot of copying. Not off your neighbor's paper, of course, just copying your step from above. So next, 6y minus 36 is negative 18. You know what to do. Add the 36 to both sides. Now we're left with 6y equals 18, divide by 6, and you are getting very excited because you know that y equals 3. So I circle that. Going back to my steps here, so I, ins I solve for a variable, actually it was already done for me, and then I circled it. Step 2, I inserted that into x right here. Third step, I solved and I circled. 
Well, here is the solve and the circle. My final step is to take this circle right here and place it into the circle up there. So easy, right? So now I'm just going to rewrite what I see right here. x equals 2y minus 9. But instead of that y, what will I put? Yes, indeed, 3. So go ahead and write 3 right there. Now I'm just going to type this into my calculator or into my brain. So I have 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 9, negative 3. And I circle that. Well finally, we're going to have to write our final answer. We always write this in the form of a point. In this case, negative 3 is our x value. x always goes first. And positive 3 is our y value. y always goes second. So our point is negative 3, 3. Alright, so right now you're probably wondering, why did I just do all of this work? Well, I'm glad you asked. Some of you, I've heard, did not enjoy graphing all that much. So what we've just done, believe it or not, is a substitution for graphing. Instead of graphing, we did all of these steps in order to figure out where two lines, x equals 2y minus 9 and 4x minus 2y equals negative 18, where these two lines intersected. So if I graphed both of these, like this, you would notice that they both did indeed intersect at the point negative 3, 3, right here. So what we just did was instead of graphing all of these lines and figuring out where they intersected, we did substitution and we saw that x and y were negative 3 and 3 respectively. This saves us some time from having to graph and also if we get crazy answers like 2.7 on a graph you would never know exactly where 2.7 was. However with this we can get exact answers such as 2.7. Now no need to worry I'm not going to throw in decimals just yet but for now we're going to stick with these easier numbers like negative 3 and 3. So just remember that the whole point of this is to find out where the two lines intersect. This is also called the solution. Alright, so now we come to our next problem. x plus 2y equals 0 and y equals x minus 3. Now if you think you can do this on your own, then let's just hit pause. And if not, then don't hit pause and I will keep going. All right, by now you have had your chance to hit pause. So I'm going to look at the first one. I am looking, remember, for x equals or y equals. In this case, it does not have x equals and it does not have y equals. So now I go to the next one. Look, it has y equals, so I'm going to circle this. And now the most important step that is often overlooked is I'm going to draw an arrow from this to what letter over here? Hopefully you have chosen the letter Y. Why? Because there's a Y right here. Next, I'm just going to copy this exactly the way it looks. X plus 2. But then, instead of Y, I'm putting a blank set of parentheses. And inside that blank, I'm going to substitute. Instead of Y, you told me back here that Y equaled X minus 3. So I will write X minus 3 right there. My third step is to solve. So I'm going to distribute the 2. And also, something I always do is, if there's no number in front of an x, put a 1 right there. So now I have 1x plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. As we had before, we have some like terms. This will almost always happen to you, so be prepared for it. 1x plus 2x is 3x. And from this point, I am assuming that you are a master equation solver and that you can add 6 to both sides and then know to divide by 3 because the 3 and the t x are touching and that is just gross. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. So I circle this knowing that x is the same thing as 2 in this problem. I go back up into my first original problem that I circled I write y equals blank minus 3. Instead of x, what shall I put? That's right, 2. 
So I put a 2 in here, and then I solve. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Now I know that my answer is 2, negative 1. But the important part is not forgetting to write it. Also, make sure you write it in the correct order. x always is first, y always is second. So my point of intersection, without even having to graph this, is 2, negative 1. Now that wasn't so bad, right? Alright, so, so far we've done the really, really easier types of problems, where we've had an x equals or a y equals already done for us. In this example, however, we do not have an x equals or a y equals. You will notice that neither one is solved for either x or y. So now we have to choose one. Which one would you like to choose? All right, I'm going to give you a hint. You always want to choose the one that has no number in front of it, whenever possible. If you can do this, you will be assured that you will have no fractions throughout the entire problem. However, if you pick one like this one that has a number in front of it, you will be doomed to have plenty of fractions through the whole thing, and nobody likes fractions. So, I'm going to choose to solve for this x. Now you're thinking right now, wait a minute, there was a y that was by itself over here. That's true, I could also solve for this y. But because this is the first thing that I saw, I'm going to solve for this x. So what that means is I'm going to have to move the 3y to the other side. Since this was subtraction, I'm going to add 3y. Now you should notice that because we know how to do algebra, these things right there cancel. Now I just copy. Don't think, just copy. X is the only thing left on the left side. I copy my equal sign and I copy negative 3 plus 3y. At this point you should have an x equals or a y equals. If you don't, you screwed up. So I'm going to circle that because it says x equals and now I'm going to draw an arrow from this to what letter over here? I'm hoping that you just said the letter X. Why? Because X is on the outside here. So this tells us that X is the same thing as negative 3 plus 3Y. So instead of X, in this next step, I'm going to put negative 3 plus 3Y. But first, I copy this equation exactly the way it looks, and then plug in my negative 3 plus 3Y. Finally, it's time to distribute and solve. So I do 2 times negative 3, and then 2 times 3y. Again, if there's no number in front of a letter, I always put a 1. As usual, we have our like terms right up here with the 6y and the 1y. So let's combine those. 6y plus 1y. 7y. And in my next step, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And then divide by 7. Being a master equation solver, I am certain you already knew how to do that part. So I get that y equals 2. I circle that, as I always do. And I head on over to make my final answer which is always in point form. Oh, but wait, I'm missing my x. So I got overly excited for nothing. I have to take the 2 and put it here in place of the y because y equals 2. So I leave a blank in place of y. In there I put a 2. And then I do this math in my head, or hopefully not, but possibly using a calculator. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. So I circle that. And now, finally, I am ready to write my final answer. x always comes first. So that answer would be 3. And my y always comes second. That is a 2. 3, 2 is my point of intersection, also known as my solution. All right, that was a little tricky. Maybe you're ready to hit pause, though, and try another one on your own. Or, if not, don't hit the pause button. Just keep playing. 
All right, so I'm going to let you take about 10 seconds to choose which of these would you prefer to use. One is a good answer. There are three of them that are bad answers. Which one are you going to choose to solve for? My hope is that you've chosen to solve for that Y right there. And the reason why is because there is no number touching it. So in order to solve for that Y, I'm going to add 5X to both sides. This will move the 5X to the right side. So these will cancel. And I'm left with Y equals, again, no thinking, just copy, negative 25 plus 5X. If you wanted to, yes indeed, you could have put 5x minus 25. That's perfectly fine with me. I just don't want to take the chance of making any mistakes, so I copied it exactly the way it looked before. I circle that. I draw an arrow. Where do I put the arrow? My hope is that you said the letter y. Because it says y equals this, I'm going to put it in for y. Next, I recopy this equation exactly the way it looks. By now, you are starting to get the hang of this. In place of y, I'm going to put an empty set of parentheses and then put my negative 25 plus 5x right there. It has substituted in place of y. Now at this point, you, equation master, are able to distribute the 4 so that will give us negative 100 and 4 times 5x is 20x as usual we will have like terms there's a 3x and a plus 20x you have a lot of x's here in fact you have 23 of them and then I copy everything else my next two steps are to add 100 and when you're doing this of course be very very careful with your positives and negatives often most people will do fantastic with the eliminate or with the substitution method and will totally understand it but then make a lame negative mistake like putting 108 for this answer and then they will cry because they come to the end and do not get the correct answer so I divide by 23, 92 divided by 23 is 4, that's correct. So we circle this, go back up to the original right here, and instead of x, I'm going to put, you guessed it, 4. So that 4 from right here goes into the x. And I type this on my calculator or do it in my head. Negative 25 plus 20 is indeed negative 5. So I circle that. And this brings us to our final answer here, which is 4. Remember, x is always first. Negative 5. So now it's time to see one of those crazy examples where some things go a little wacky. So over here, we already have this solved for y. By now, hopefully, you have realized that this is going to be an easier type of problem because y is already solved by itself. So I'm going to draw an arrow over here to what letter? Hopefully you have chosen y because this says y equals 2x minus 5. So next, I should copy this exactly the way it looks, but instead of y, I'm going to put the 2x minus 5. Now you're thinking to yourself right now, this does not look any different than it did before. Just hold on there, buckaroo. It will soon. So we're going to distribute that negative 2. This is another important thing to notice because people often mess up this step. This right here is a negative 2 that you are multiplying through. Don't forget to multiply the negative. So I have negative 2 times 2x, that's negative 4x. And negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. As usual, we have some like terms that we can connect. We have a 4x and a minus 4x. 
Now you probably already know that 4 minus 4 is 0. So it's nothing. It cancels out. There's nothing there anymore. So we're left with 10 equals 10. We have no x's whatsoever. So whenever all of the variables cancel out, now variables, remember, are letters. So when all of the letters have canceled and you have nothing but a number equaling another number, one of two possible things could happen. One is the answer is no solution. That's when all the variables have canceled and your result is a big fat lie. The other example is if you have all of the variables canceling and the result is true. That's called infinite solutions. So in this case, all of your variables canceled and 10 equals 10. Does 10 equal 10? Well, of course it does. So this is true. So your answer to this would be infinite solutions. So I would take this and write infinite solutions for my answer to this problem. The answer would be infinite solutions. So that means I could pick any number I wish and plug it in for x into this equation, come up with a y, and it would give me the exact same x and y in this equation. So if I were to graph these two lines, let's say I have a pretty graph here, what would happen is one line would be there, and then I would graph the next line, and that line would lie directly on top of the other. The two lines would actually be the exact same line. They would intersect in many, many places. For example, here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here. Well, you get the picture. So they would intersect in many, many, many places, infinitely many places, in fact. So this is called infinite solutions. All right, let's review this again. This only is a possibility if all variables cancel. Again here, all variables have canceled. This is the only way that you can have no solution or infinite solutions. So if you still have an x or if you still have a y, your answer will not be no solution or infinite solutions. Let's do another example. So in this one, you see that y is already solved for us. So we will circle this and draw an arrow to what letter over here? Hopefully you have chosen y because it says that y equals 3x minus 1. So I will rewrite this equation exactly the way it looked before. Instead of y, however, I will put 3x minus 1 because that's what we circled. You're probably getting very good at this now and are probably even ahead of me. Now I'm going to distribute the 2. This is going to give me plus 6x and minus 2. As always, I have like terms. Negative 6x plus 6x. Again, you know that negative 6 plus 6 completely cancels. They're not here anymore. They're gone. Adios. See you later. That's 0. Now I'm just going to copy my minus 2 equals 6. Now, are these two things true? Does negative 2 equal 6? Or is it a lie? Well, negative 2, as far as I can tell, never equals 6. So this is a lie. My answer will then be no solution. So go back here and copy no solution. And write that as your final answer. Or not. There we are. Sorry, it's hard to write with these webbed fingers. So no solution is the correct answer. Once again, that is the case because negative 2 is not equal to 6. We've been caught in a lie. So what this means, if I were to graph these on this beautiful graph that I have taken so much time to draw, if I were to graph these, there would be my first line perhaps, and my second line would look like this. And I would notice that never, ever, ever do these two lines intersect. In fact, they are what's known as, that's right, parallel, parallel. They will never touch. So the answer will be no solution because they will never cross each other. Well, we've learned a heck of a lot today. We've learned about substitution. And actually, you didn't learn a whole lot of new things because you already knew about substitution. 
you remember that when your math teacher or history teacher or whoever is absent, there's sometimes a really good-looking substitute teacher that comes in his place. Like today. So, in place of your teacher, there's been a substitute. And in the same way, in place of 2y minus 9, we have done a substitution. So instead of x, we've substituted 2y minus 9 right here in order to solve. In some of these examples, it was super easy to find x equals or even y equals, and to take that, draw an arrow into whatever letter it equals, and then substitute the x minus 3 in place of the y and solve. Once we got the x, we would substitute it back into the equation that we had circled and find the y. Or, in this case, we first found the y and then substituted it into what we circled and solved for x. In both examples, we finally end the problem by putting the x and the y together to create a point. And the same thing here, 2, negative 1. There were some other examples that were a little more difficult where it was not already solved for us for either x or y. So the trick that I gave you was you always look for the letter without a number in front of it. In this case, we could have chosen this y right here or this x right here. Since I saw the x first, I chose him. I solved for that. Remember, by the time you finish that first step, you should either have an x or a y all by itself, like we did here and like we did here. We solved just one step, we added the 5x, and we had y all by itself. Once you have that, you draw the arrow to whatever it equals in the other equation and substitute it in. At that point, it is exactly like the super easy problems that we did in the beginning. You solve for either x or y, and then substitute it into what we circled and write what your final answer is in point form. We found out that if we have all of the x's cancelling, and it is true, that is called infinite solutions. The reason why is because they are both the exact same line, and they cross in many points. Your other option is no solution, and this is when all of your variables cancel, and the result is a big fat lie. So in this case, all of the x is cancelled, and negative 2 does not equal negative 6, so we wrote no solution for our answer. The reason for this is because these two lines, when graphed, would never touch. They're parallel. Unfortunately, that sound means that our time here is up. Some person once said that a conclusion is when you just got tired of thinking. However, in this case, it just means I'm running late for my pedicure. Well, don't be sad though. Just ask your teacher if I can come back again to teach this awesome class. I would love to be here again. I hope you've enjoyed this math lesson as much as you can possibly enjoy a math lesson. Well, thank you again very much for inviting me here. Have a wonderful day. Bye now. Okay, turn it off. Seriously, I can't keep smiling like this.